Hi guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to be learning how to play the Tomb Hammer and showing my progress from zero spec in hammers. So if you're new to the Tomb Hammer, you can see what worked for me, what didn't work for me, and what I changed within my build to make it work a little bit better for me. I'm going to be starting out in Hunter level Corrupted Dungeons and ending up in Slayer Corrupted Dungeons. The build we're going for today is a Guardian Helmet for the Emergency Heal, we're going Knight Armor for the Wind Wall, and we're going to take the Sandals of Purity for the Hover. Also, we're going to be using the Demon Cape for the extra damage when we get the stuns, the omelets so we can get the cooldown reductions and the poison to reduce their resistance. So here we are in our first ever fight with the new build and we are up against a spear build. The main thing I noticed from this first fight is that I wasn't putting out a lot of damage. I soon realised that the Demon Cape working with the stun from my E was very important to dealing damage. Now this fight did go on for a while and involved me running away for the whole duration. To be honest, I did feel a bit bad for the guy I was against, as it was a hunter level dungeon and it's, this took up a lot of his time. He eventually catches up to me as I decide to stand in this fire for about 5 minutes because I'm terrible at the game, so as you can see, my tomb hammer journey is off to a good start. For the second hunter fight, we're up against a claymore. I was super lucky that he decided to stand in my demon cape damage here, which takes him down quite a bit, but he does land a silence on me so I'm going to be resetting the fight. From what I'm seeing so far, it's good to use the E to stun your opponent from far away, but by the time we catch up to them and auto attack them to proc the demon cape, the stun is pretty much done. So I think it may be better to save the stun on the E for when we're a little bit closer and can get the cape procced earlier, dealing more damage. In this fight, he does decide to run away and actually dies to mobs, so I'm taking this as our first ever win. Dump face Q, thank you very much for the first ever win with the Tomb Hammer. And as you can see, we get 2.2k silver from this kill, incredible first kill. At this point, I have decided to switch out my helmet from Guardian Helm for the heal over to Mage Cow for the poison. I feel like this build needs a little bit more damage. And also, I'm going to switch it up for the Thetford Cape. Spoiler alert, do not switch to a Thetford Cape with this build. Demon Cape is 100% better. Okay, and for our next fight, we're up against Black Hands. Now, this is something I hate playing against with my normal build. I normally play normal bow, and I have so much trouble killing, so I'm intrigued to see how this goes. So, a nice first engage here, I think. Did some damage to him, placed the wind wall, ready to run away for a little reset and deal some more damage, but I decided to stick around for some reason. Not sure why I did that. Should have placed the wind wall and reset and come back for some more damage. In that time, because I stuck around, he was able to deal a bit of damage to me, which is not great, but we get a little engage in the northeast here by the flames, and he does run into one of them for some reason, which is good for me. Now he does manage to get a poison off and an attack on me. Windwall him away there, but he manages to swipe through that, unfortunately for me. He does manage to cancel my first E with his E, and then get my second E, deal quite a bit of damage to him, and get him low enough. We take him down, that's the second Hunter level Corrupted Dungeon win back to back, so you know what that means. That means we're going into full loot PvP Stalker level dungeons, it's time to see what we've learned. Now a great thing about this build is, if you clear a square on the map, you can outrun basically anyone. So as you can see here on the map, just clear a square and you can reset your fight whenever you need to. The guy I'm against here knows this and he's just deciding to destroy the crystals, so we're on to the next one. Here we are in the next stalker fight where I mess up so bad as you can see here on the map. I've cleared the square that I need to run around and reset the fights, but I choose to run into mobs in the northwest. So use your brain guys, don't be like me in this situation. Stalker attempt number three. Okay, in this one we're up against the exact same Tomb Hammer build, which worries me from the get-go as I'm brand new to this build. The only difference here is he is using the correct cape and I'm still on the Thetford cape. I did try a new W ability here, the Water Geyser that stuns briefly. Don't do this, it's terrible. I think you should stick for the run that slows by 50%. I think that's one of the best Ws here. And to save you time, guys, he destroys me. I'm dead. I hope you're happy. On to the next one. Here we are now matched up against a Carving Sword. This is the first fight in Stalker that actually looks like it's going well. We end up doing quite a bit of damage here in the first engage, getting him down to one and a half bars of HP. And as you can see here, thanks to our first engage with him, he only has two bars of HP and he's unable to deal enough damage to us. So we do end up taking him out up here in the north on the spikes. So this does make it our first ever Stalker level dungeon kill. So it's a win. And we've been rewarded with the legendary chest. Here's that chest. I, it could have been better, but we'll take what we can get. 
And here we are with our next fight, and we are up against a healer. Being brand new to this build, I'm not entirely sure how to fight this, as the plan is to deal damage, run away, deal damage, run away, but with a healer, they can just heal up and they're good to continue. So if there are any pro Tomb Hammer players in here, please do let me know what you'd recommend when fighting a healer. I do end up destroying the crystals, as I didn't want to waste too much time here. And straight into the next one, where we are met with another carving sword. I do feel really bad for this guy, as we did catch him off guard, half HP, and trying to destroy crystals. Uh, you know, there's, there's not much to say here. It's a bit of a mess, uh, but as you can see, we are going to take the win here and go through to the next dungeon. So unfortunately I didn't have enough spec in hammers as I started from zero spec with this video. I've decided to spend some points to get my hammers up to level 70. So that will unlock the third Q for me which reduces resistance by 57 for 4 seconds and deals 348 physical damage to all enemies in a 3 meter radius. It was at this point that I realised this is costing me some money. It's taking me some time to get used to this build. I have included every single fight that I've been a part of just so you can see how many wins, how many losses, my whole progress and we're going to continue all the way up to Slayer. In our next fight our opponent just decides to run the whole way so this is great for me just dealing the damage as and when I can. From what I'm seeing so far, the order of the spells is Q to reduce the resistance, E to stun with a quick auto attack to proc the cape, and then W through them to run away and wait for your cooldowns, and then the next engage and repeat this process. The E can also be super good to catch your opponent off guard in traps or mobs, and that can deal quite a bit of damage to them. And here we are for the next one where we're up against a Black Hands. As you can see, I'm experimenting with a royal helmet here to see if it's worth the extra stun time with the build. All in all, I think it's best to stick with Guardian Helmet for the heal or Mage Cow for the poison for the extra damage. The first engage doesn't go too well for me here, which is not a problem with this build, as it is designed to be able to retreat and come back when you're ready for the next engage. And of course we're able to catch up with him when we're back at full health and we're actually given the opportunity here to stun him on a lava bat. So the stun holds him in position nicely and the lava from the bat just deals its damage as we keep him held in position. And now that we've won quite a few in the stalker dungeons, we think it's time, you know, I'm feeling good, I'm thinking it's time to jump into Slayer. So here we go, first ever Slayer dungeon, let's see how it goes. We're up against a frost build here and I've got my pals in my ear on Discord telling me it's an easy win. I'm feeling pumped and unfortunately he grabs a few hits on me early on here and takes a bit of my health away. And if only that was the end of it. He continues to slowly just beat me down piece by piece. As you can see, I have a lot of work to do on this build. I really appreciate you guys watching me learning this process. I hope you get something from it as well whilst learning it yourself. We are going to be continuing this in a second episode where I'm in Slayer Dungeons only. Going to be trying to perfect this build. If you are very good at this build with a track record of this build and want to give me some tips, please do reach out. I appreciate that because as you can see, I'm going to need some advice if I'm going to be winning in Slayer level Corrupteds with this build. All in all, it's not my usual style of build. I'm excited to learn it and perfect it in the coming weeks though. So thank you guys so much for watching. And if you did enjoy the video, please do consider subscribing. It really does help me out. You guys have a nice night and I'll catch you next time.